Hello, welcome to this video lecture on cubic spline interpolation. In the next 10 minutes, I will try to explain what cubic spline interpolation is. Now, let's start with the basics. What is interpolation? Interpolation means estimation of data value between a set of precise data points. Now, we know what polynomial interpolation is. Polynomial interpolation is basically a set of points are given and we need to find what f of x is that satisfies these data points. We know that only one and only one function satisfies these points. Now through these n plus one number of points only one nth order polynomial would be satisfying it. These are the examples of a linear quadratic and cubic polynomial function. We already we already know the merits and demerits of Newton's as well as Lagrange's polynomial. These are the polynomial systems that we've already learned. The polynomials are actually used because they're easy to differentiate, integrate and evaluate. Then why go for splines? Splines are used because for higher order polynomials, the, the oscillations are quite high. Now if we see for the same function f of x, we see that although a set of data points are satisfying the function, in that interval there are huge oscillations. So that's why it will give a wrong result. If we interpolate that value between that interval, we'll get a wrong result. And that's why higher order polynomials are a bad idea. Now let's go for what splines are. Splines, to put it simply, for each interval, if you write a different function and you connect all those points, you get a spline function. Now, why are splines used then? Splines are used because at each we get an approximate function an approximate function in the sense that for a cubic, for example, now let's see when there is a jump in data how splines are useful. Uh, when a third order polynomial is plotted, a fourth order polynomial is plotted and a fifth order polynomial is plotted, we don't seem to get the right results. But when a linear spline is plotted, that is each interval is made into a function and they're plotted we get almost exact results so approximate results are obtained it gives a superior approximation basically so what is spline interpolation the concept of spline interpolation is simply a thin flexible strip that connects number of points these points are also called knots now to understand splines, let us consider we have drawn functions, different lines or functions between an intervals. Now, if you want to connect these two intervals, if we connect them in such a way that they are continuous, then they are called the first order spline. If we connect them in such a way, that they are continuous as well as differentiably continuous we call them as second order spline and if we connect them in such a way that they are continuous their first order is continuous and their second order is also continuous we're saying that their continuity is maintained their slopes are equal and to top it we're saying curvatures are also equal so let's go so that is called a cubic spline, basically. So let's go to what the derivation is. So for a second order derivative in the interval xi minus xi and xi minus 1, we get a straight line. So using Lagrangian polynomial, for that second order derivative, we write f double dash of x as that. Now, if we integrate these functions, we get two constants and these two constants are you uh, are found out by applying the continuity equation that is f of x 
is equal to f of x i minus 1 at x i minus 1 and f of x is equal to f of x i at x is equal to x i. Now using these two equation or these two conditions we get at x is equal to x i this term becomes 0 and at x is equal to x i minus 1 this term becomes 0. So we obtain those two values of a and b and now after integration we substitute it into this equation and we get the value of f i of x. Now in this equation if we see if we observe we can see that there are two basic unknowns which are nothing but the double derivatives which is f, do, f dash of f double dash of x i and f double dash of x i minus 1. Now if we apply the differentially continuous equation to this equation we obtain another equation. Now using this equation we arrive at n plus 1 number of unknowns and n minus 1 number of equations. Now how do you solve that? To solve that we require certain conditions called as n point conditions. These n point conditions generally are taken as f double dash of n points are equal to 0. This type of condition is called natural spline condition. Let's see a cubic spline problem. For the set of values of x and f of x, we are told to find the value of x is equal to 5. So we know the boundary conditions for a natural spline are f double dash of 3 and f double dash of 9 are equal to 0. Now using the continued the equation that we've arrived at and solving it for x1 is equal to 4.5, that is the internal point, x1 is equal to 4.5, we obtain an equation after substituting the endpoint condition. If you solve the problem at x is equal to 7, which is another internal point, we obtain another equation after substituting, obviously, the endpoint condition. So we've got two equations and two unknowns and we solve them we get f double dash of 4.5 and f double dash of 7. Now as I've already told that in spline interpolation each interval you get a different function. So basically here what we are doing is we're trying to find different function in each interval. So for i equal to 1 that is the first interval we try to find the function f1 of x. Now we have found all those unknowns. The unknowns in that equation, if you recall, were f double dash of x and f double dash of x i minus 1, both of which we have already found. So if we apply it in the interval i equal to 1, we get f1 of x. Similarly, applying it in the interval 2, we get f2 of x. And similarly, applying it in the third interval f3, we get f3 of x. So we were told to find x is equal to 5 which lies in the second interval. So solving that f2 of x is equal to 1.102886. Thank you. Hope this lecture was productive.